NASA has confirmed details of a new mission that will see a drone the size of a small car go to Saturn's largest moon in search of signs of life. Joining me now is our CTV science and technology expert, Dan Riskin. Dan, thank you, as always, for joining us. It's a pleasure. I'm excited about this. This is very cool. It's, it's an ambitious program, isn't it? It is ambitious. It's not the first mention of it. This is something that was sort of, uh, it was suggested, uh, but they were sort of saying goodbye to the little flying robot for, uh, that did so well on Mars and wanted to be able to be clear that this was going to have a legacy. And so now they have made very clear that they are all in for a July 2028 launch of a drone like a flying car-sized robot that would go to one of the moons of Saturn called Titan mm -hmm. and fly around and do cool things there. <laughs> now, uh, I, I, there's so many things I would love to talk about. We'll start with why are they going to Titan first? Titan is awesome. But for, okay, so there's two different... Scientists like it and engineers like it. Here's why scientists like it is because there is, as far as we can tell, a liquid ocean under a shell of ice and there are hydrological cycles like we have on Earth with rain and snow and ice and liquid, but not with water, it's with methane. And so uh, because the environment's very different, uh, the chemistry is different. But nonetheless, with those kinds of factors, this seems like a great place to look for life in our solar system, better than Saturn itself. Uh, so this is a really a special spot. But that's why the scientists like it. We might find life there. The reason the engineers like it is because if you wanted to build a place to send a flying robot, this is what you want <laughs> because gravity is weak and the atmosphere is thick. It's about five times thicker than the atmosphere here on Earth. One of the great challenges with the rover that was flying on Mars is that it had to do with, with about 1% of the atmospheric pressure that we have on Earth. So those rotors had to work so hard to get anything to grab so they could fly. On Titan, it's going to be the opposite. You've got five times the density, and so it's going to be super easy for something flying to get a grip. And then gravity is about 13%, I believe, as strong as it is here on Earth. And so uh, something the size of a car only weighs you know, 13% that much, you know, basically like an mm -hmm. eighth of as much as it would otherwise. So um, there are lots of reasons that this makes a flying robot mission perfect for Titan. Okay, now, and I was reading, it's going to be a nuclear-powered... Uh, drone. How does that change the whole, uh, the whole, uh, the whole plan? Well, what's nice about nuclear power is that it you don't have to wait for the sun to hit your solar panels, and you can have a, a lot of energy that goes for quite a while. So the little thing that was flying around on Mars, uh, Ingenuity, was fabulous, great design, had solar panels, so it would fly for about thirty minutes, and then it would have to go rest, and it would have to get lots of sun. The, uh, the experience on Titan will be different. You're farther away from the sun, so solar power is weaker. Uh, there's also a denser atmosphere, so not as many solar rays are going to be making it down to your solar panels. So for those reasons, solar panels present a lot of scary challenges and a lot of sort of ifs. Um, all it takes is a little bit cloud in the wrong place or a, a gust of wind that covers it with snow or ice and you've got a problem. So with nuclear power, you've got something that you can rely on. There's nuclear power powering all kinds of different things on different planetary bodies all over the place. We've used nuclear power on Mars for, for lots of things. So we know it works, it's a tested technology. Um, and then the other thing is that uh, a day on Titan lasts about 16 Earth days. And so a night on Titan is gonna be similarly long. And so if you have to have these long periods of darkness, that can be bad for electronics. So having that nuclear power is just a more sustainable way to build this mission. I have so many more questions, but I guess the last one, do we want to end up there at some point? Like a person this is, there? We want to know what it looks like. I think this is the kind of place that's really built for us to send robots to. The logistics of trying to make a human survive there are even harder than the logistics of trying to make a human survive on Mars, which is even harder than the moon. And right now we're just trying to get people back on the moon. So one step at a time, definitely we're ready to send robots. So the launch would be July, 2028, Landing on Titan would be 2034. So we're already planning quite a ways into the future, but that's only a decade away. It's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. And it gets quicker and quicker as you get older. Dan, thank you, as yeah. always. Love chatting about this stuff with that's you. That's true. Talk to you soon.